Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Let's Play of Moto, excuse me, Championship Motocross 2001 featuring Ricky Carmichael. I'm the Ninja Stalker. And we were supposed to, excuse me, sorry about that. We were supposed to begin the 250cc on the Honda, excuse me, uh, the Reds bike that we've chosen with. Now this bike has been handling pretty damn nicely, you know, and we've won top pick all the races on amateur. We've won top pick all the races on 125cc. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to try 250cc winning pretty much top pick, even though there isn't a, a class after 250 for this uh, game. Um, we're going to try win every race. We didn't get a chance to do that on the Kawasaki. There just wasn't a chance. We came close with the KTM, but well, didn't really make it. Now, we're going to try with this one. Hopefully, this bike can prove that it is capable of doing that for us. And then again, there also is my experience with the game. I am getting a little bit better as time goes on, and I'm not boasting. It's just it's just a natural thing that will happen with anybody out there. Once you start practicing enough of something, whether it's a video game or something in real life, you will get better at it. That was the thing with me when I was practicing and learning how to fly a plane. You know, you just keep practicing. You keep uh, going at it, getting better at it. Next thing you know, you'll, you'll be pretty good at it. You'll be, you'll be, you know, better at it, basically. Of course, the problem with flying, learning how to fly a plane, there's also the money factor. You have to have money to do that. You have to throw money at learning. It's basically just like class. I'm not saying that I'm rich. There's No, 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 no. I am not. But I'm just saying, just like schooling for the university or for or even for a college, a community college, you got to throw money at the situation to learn. Once you learn, what you get back in return should, bene should be more beneficial over the amount of money you put in because then there are jobs and careers out there that call for vacation, vocational skills or technical skills or actual uh, college credit course skills that you can learn and put it to the job. That way they can train you specifically at that position that you're going for, you know? That's what I meant. I don't want you to think that I'm that I'm wealthy or rich, you know, even even to learn how to fly. I mean, because first of all, it wasn't my money, it was my pop's money, and he isn't even rich either, you know? We just managed to save up uh, enough money for him to say, you know what, I want my son to learn how to fly a plane, and he wants to learn how to fly aircraft, you know? And I'll help him, and, and he did. You know, he's a great guy for that, you know? I like that. And now I'm actually getting ready to join the military, and Hope to see if I could be a warrant officer and a pilot in the military. For the skills and uh, and the college uh, courses and university courses I've learned, I hope I can uh, get there, you know? So, here we are. 250cc championship with the Honda by or the Reds. I'm, I'm going to call it Honda. You guys, you guys fucking know what kind of bike it is. Uh, based on that one review I told you about, uh, from that one guy, I'm not going to mention his name, and I forgot his name anyways, but I can pull it back up on my phone, but I'm not going to. He uh, gave his personal opinion saying that Honda would be uh, the best choice. After them is Kawasaki, after them would be Yamaha, then, then uh, KTM, and then Suzuki. Me, personal opinion, I kind of like KTM, even though KTM didn't get his first place all the races, but it did give us first place a majority of the races, and the acceleration on that bike just phenomenal. Now this bike has been giving us first place in all the races, but I have not noticed that it has that that grunt force that the KTM gives with the acceleration. Now it could just be that this bike has a little less acceleration, but enough acceleration. You know, it's, it's got more than the Kawasaki, but the Kawasaki's got speed. But this bike just so happens to balance out everywhere else where the KTM failed, and that could be beneficial to us, the reason why we're probably getting first place in a majority, uh, pretty much in all the races so far. Um, then again, somebody could probably argue, say, you know, all the bikes in this game are the same, uh, Ninja Stalker, it's just that you're getting better at the game, that the next bike that you pick's probably going to do you good, and then the bike after that's going to do better, and then so on and so on. That's a possibility, you know, I am open to all options, I'm not just going to see one side to something, you know. So let's go to Glen Helen. We got uh, 2.1 miles of mud. Let's uh, go to the shop, as we don't have uh, anything, so we need mud tires. We are going to need oversized sprockets for that acceleration. We are going to need the race fuel 
for the speed. We are going to need brakes for the turns. We are going to need the rebuilt engine for the horsepower or revs and uh, speed as well. So we're down to 4150, but we do have 16 races to go through. We're probably going to end up in the 7, maybe even 8,000 range on cash by the end of all this. And that's looking real nice. Even though, I mean, you don't really do much with the money. But again, for our Let's Play in this, it's about y'all. It's about you guys, me, and the crew. And the crew's probably comprised of any of you viewers out there. You know, you guys are helping out make this make this bike into a beast. And I'm driving it out there with skills and all. We've had our ups and downs, you know, uh, on races in the past with, you know, uh, the crew and you guys coming with me from Kawasaki to KTM. Now we're here with the Honda or the Reds. Um, so, yeah. Let's uh, let's get into it. Yep. So let's go ahead and put that in. Nope, we don't want that. We want that. Put that sucker in. Put that sucker in. And most definitely put that sucker in. And that should pretty much do it for us. So let's go ahead and start the race. And uh, let's try and get first place. We also have to watch out for that one song, which I kind of forgot. And this isn't it. Um. Put it down a bit. Alright, we got it. Oh shit. These guys. Oh my god! They took me out! These motherfuckers! You sons of bitches! They were like, no, this is the guy who won first place all the time in the 125? The hell with him! These assholes! Can just su oh shit. Okay, yeah, and then he runs my, he runs over my body. You saw that? He broke my legs, guys. I'm trying to ride this uh, this bike with some broken legs. Dude, this bike is... Uh, it's fucking killing it. On the, uh, on the speed here. And the acceleration. What are we, third? We're gonna have to get that first place, guys. Nah, these guys had it out for me. They were like, this is the fucker that won number one top pick from, uh, what do you call it, from the amateur race, he won number one top pick in the 125cc pro championship, nah, we gotta take him out, somebody break his, somebody knock into him and then someone run over his legs, they got both of their wishes, but that ain't, that ain't taking me out, oh no, okay, this bike has one hell of a, a drag? I don't know if drag's the right word. It's a power steer, oversteer, I don't know what you want to call it, but it, it likes to it likes to just go. Jesus. Well we're doing okay for now. Those fuckers, they were like, nah, he won every race on amateur, every race on 125. Somebody please do something to him. They're trying to get rid of us, y'all. Those people on the sidelines saw the whole thing, and that's why they're cheering us on. They're like, go, you magnificent man with broken legs at this point. We don't know how you're shifting and, and keeping your legs on the uh, on the bike, but just, just do it. Our legs right now, in reality, are probably just dangling behind us and shit. They're like Linguini, you know, just, just back there, moving back and forth into the wind, you know? So, what are some things to talk about? Um, yeah, see, Linguini. We did the Superman, our legs were just flapping about, you know. Anyways, um, what were some things to talk about? Well, um, I mentioned before I was doing some runs, right? Like, I was going out running for three miles now, which I have been doing. And surprisingly today, when I did my run, um, I wasn't as, uh, as tired as I was before. And it was just like I mentioned. It was just like I mentioned earlier. Like, as soon as you start practicing that... At doing the at doing the mile runs right, and then you move up to the three mile runs, and you start getting used to it. You'll start moving on up to um, 
not take as many breaks as you do. And I noticed that this this day today, uh, I didn't take as many breaks. You know, I think I probably took uh, two or three breaks max. And that's when I actually got to the mile mark and I decided to turn around. I was like, okay, we'll, you know, take a little break here. We'll walk a short distance just to catch our breath and then we'll get back into it. And I took less breaks. It was three max, you know, I think. Maybe it might have been two in all honesty. Well, excuse me, it might have been two, but three in all honesty, I should say. Um, but yeah, I was, I was very surprised about that. I was like, oh, wow, this is good. I like this. And I think it's due to the fact of the way I do my uh, my arm swings, you know? You know how, like, some people, they'll, uh, they're heavy uh, arm swingers. They'll, they'll, like, lock up their, well, not lock up, but they'll start moving their uh, shoulders and arms. So then their arms start getting tired and maybe even sore. So that's what was happening with me for a little bit. But I was still able to do the runs before I decided to do three or two breaks this time around. Before it probably was, like, four breaks at most. But this time, I, you know, I started, you know, easing, relaxing on my arms, and I was like, oh, wow, you know, this is pretty good, I like this. But before that run, there was one run that, that, that was a little sketchy to me. Alright, we didn't get the new lap record, that sucks. And I didn't even get a chance to see who was, uh, my enemies in this, because they were all against me. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? So, um... The reason why I said one of the runs was sketchy. All right, so when I go and do my runs, I picked I picked a new run this time. When I did my one mile runs, I started up on this hill, and then it would gradually go down, up, then down, then up, and then it goes like real down. But it's not a steep incline to where it's an easy downhill run. You know, no, it's 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 a it's a, a decline. But you know, it goes down, then you turn, and you go on this turn. It slightly goes up, right? So you want to be on the inner uh, on the inner turn, so it'd be a little easier for you, less distance. But I decided not to do that. And then it goes up and then down, and then it's, and at the very end of the of this one mile, it goes up, right? And it just keeps going up, and then it stops to where the one mile mark is. So then that would be my and the end of my one mile. Um, officially, unofficially, I do more than one miles. Whenever I say, "Oh yeah, I'm just gonna go do my one mile runs." Unofficially, I, I start walking, and then there's this one hill that's a steep decline, but then it goes up into a hell of an incline. So I'll run down the decline, and then I'll start walking, power walking up the incline, and then it turns up to another incline, and then I'm back where I started my, uh, my one mile, and then I run again, but this time down my street. You know, so I'll, I'll run, it'll go up, down, up, down, then I turn from my street instead of going down that one decline I was telling you about that's not so much a decline, like a steep decline. Instead of going down there, I just take this turn to my street and then I just go down this, it's about a shallow decline. However, for this three mile, this is what I do. Instead of taking that same one mile route, I this, this time I take this one route that's pretty much level leveled uh leveled route not so many declines and inclines there are probably more inclines and declines on this uh route that i take for the three mile but it's good it's good for the per you know for the body anyways i go out all the way in like past these woods next to this cemetery it's like saint patrick's cemetery or something and then from there i'll just run and jog all the way on this on this one road that just leads you straight on through all the way to this uh the stop sign where where it was originally the end of my one mile for the one mile runs but that'll be my new one mile for the three mile runs right so then i go there and then i turn back i start walking a little bit you know a good uh maybe 50 feet or something something like that it's really not too far and then i start jogging again right and then i go back to saint patrick's then i come back and then that's three right and then uh uh, that's officially unofficially I do that that one route I was telling you about where I go up and then down this this hell of a decline then up this uh, incline then I do that so I really actually do a little bit more than three miles anyways what makes it sketchy was there's this one time I'm running on this new route I'm like all right you know it's the second time I've been on this route I go run and I see in the distance this white car parked next to the cemetery right like this car goes down this road that I'm on because I see it uh, ahead of me and it goes and takes a turn and it stops right there at the cemetery, but it has its lights on. I'm keeping a good eye on the car because I'm like, all right, you know what? Benefit of the doubt, maybe they're there for the cemetery. Maybe they know somebody there. 
the entire time I'm watching, I know some people have good eyesight, and even worse than that, some people out there are very a, a bit shady. Some people would have probably but not binoculars and all that. Then again, some of you are probably like, you know, that's you just being real paranoid. Would you leave that to chance for you if it was you? Anyways, for me, I'm keeping my eye on this vehicle, but I'm doing the best I can to keep my head down. Because remember when I told you when I was a little kid, I used to run or walk with my feet looking down at the, or with my face looking down at the ground, right? So I'm doing that again here, because I don't want I don't want this person or people, whoever they are in this white car, to know that I'm looking at them. So I got my head tilted down if they were gonna look, you know, through binos or if they got eagle eye vision, because some people do. Um, but I got my eyes like fixated at the at the brim, right? So I can I can look on up, but then I'm looking down, right? And I'm looking on up, and I see the entire time no one's getting out of the fucking vehicle. Then I see this big old truck roll up behind the white car and then stop right there and they got their lights on and I see people in there moving and looking and somebody's pointing out the window and stuff and I was like you know this is only the second time I've been on this run um you know I've navigated this this location this is a good spot for me I don't want to lose this spot but I don't want to run up to these fuckers next to the cemetery because I don't know if all of a sudden I'm gonna disappear and then I end up being a new, uh, a new I end up having a new lot at St. Patrick's Cemetery. You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, some guy disappears uh, on a run. No one knows where he's at. Uh, by the way, there's a new lot in the cemetery. Or some shit. You know what I'm talking about? Again, paranoid as can be, um, while trying to not look too paranoid. So I'm running right. I'm getting closer to this place. There's gravel road and all that. I got like houses next to me with people outside and all that. And I, I'm like, all right, you know what? I got I got a good trick here. This is what I'm gonna do. So I'm running right, and I see uh, the lights uh, are still on. I see people moving in the vehicle, and I see like fingers still pointing and stuff. And I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. This is what I'm gonna do. So right before you get onto the gravel road and you leave these new fresh set of houses of where I live, because these are new houses. There's a stop sign. And I was like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I went up to the stop sign. I stopped. I started stretching. Then I ran back. I ran back on the on the path on the opposite direction. So instead of going the full one mile in return back to St. Patrick's, I stopped at this one area. I rolled back. I, I, like, I doubled back, and I started hustling this time, you know. And then to make up for the one mile that I didn't do 100% complete, I did that unofficial run that I was telling you about that I, you know, I, do, I actually do more than three miles. That ended up being part of my regimen for that day, which was, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Or did I take a break yesterday? No, I haven't taken a break yet. Yeah, I haven't taken a break yet because actually my feet are, are hurting. I got like a blood blister underneath one of my nails. Does any, any of you guys have that when you go on runs sometimes? You'll have like a, one of your nails look like there's blood underneath them. I guess a blood blister, right? You know, and you can actually peel off your, your, your toenail. You know, it's going to hurt real quick, but it's actually good at the end or some shit if, if you're into that shit. Well, I didn't do that. And then like today on this run, I actually went all the way to paint St. Patrick's because that white car and the truck was in there. And I was like, oh, thank God. Uh, but what, instead, the other, the other injury I get today is I still got that blood blister underneath the toenail. Uh, but I also had a... What do you call this? Um, it's like if you pop it, liquid comes out. Clear liquid. A blister. There you go. I was like, what the fuck? I just called it a blood blister for my toenail. I got like a regular blister this time on this right side of my toe. And I was like, fuck. And then I just popped it uh, a while ago. It was a long time ago. Uh, like a few hours ago. And then I was like, oh, now it feels better. But I still got that... that it's on my left foot. Yeah, it's on my left foot on the second toe next to the uh, the big toe you know it's, it's basically that one long toe that looks like the middle finger toe basically that's what I would call it and then on the pinky toe on the same foot on the left foot it's uh, there's a little tiny blood blister but it's whatever it it hurts but that's part of the pain it's like they say no pain no gain so there's that <laughs> um, anyways yeah so there was that and I was like there is no way I was telling myself in that run, I was like, there's no way I'm going to fucking run up there. I mean, I'm confident in myself to defend myself, alright? 
I'm very confident in myself to defend myself, but I don't know what they got. It's like the same concept when you're on a motorcycle. I'm, in my motorcycle, I drive without a helmet a lot. Why? Because I like the maneuverability for my head that I can turn fully without having that, that helmet on and then you can't like, you know, turn all the way. Your field of vision isn't as, as wide as it is when you don't have a helmet on. And I'll ride without a helmet, you know, just the wind and, you know, my head and hair out in the wind and I got my sunglasses, you know, my Oakleys that actually wrap around my, my, uh, my eyes, right? You know, it's not one of the open uh, face Oakleys where wind could actually kick underneath, you know, this is the Oakleys that actually, I think they're called the half jackets where they can actually rest on the, on the top of your cheeks so wind won't actually get up in there no matter how fast you go. So I got those, right? And it's the same concept for that. You can tell yourself you're a good driver, but are you going to trust people out there to be good drivers, you know? You might be the best driver out there, but somebody's going to bound and fuck you up, you know? That was the same concept with that run. I was telling myself, you know, um, I'm a decent-sized guy. I go to the gym a lot. I know how to defend myself. I've taken Modern Army Combatives. I'm a Level 1 instructor, um, and I've got that through the university at where I was at because I was with uh, an ROTC group, and they... They taught us, they asked us, anyone want to learn how to do this, this will count as a college credit and you'll get to learn how to defend yourself and it'll be a level one and once you complete the course you'll pretty much be a level one combatives instructors. I was like, I'll do it, I, I need this, I need to learn how to defend myself because before then all I had was martial arts that I didn't fully complete. I mean I took Hapkido, there was Taekwondo, there was Karate, but I didn't rank it to a black belt, you know, I was pretty much at the beginning parts of this, but there's still stuff you learn. Um, so I had that. I was telling myself, I know how to defend myself. However, I don't know if one of these fuckers, if not all of them, have got a gun, a shotgun, or anything. Because in the state of Kansas, you can open carry. You know? And I was telling myself, if I go on a run, I can open carry. But do I want to do that? Do I want people looking at me like this and that? You know, because this is a very friendly neighborhood. We got kids about. I don't need them to try and look and then complain to their parents. Oh, this guy's got a gun. Oh, my God. And all that other junk. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm very, fairly confident. Very, very, fairly confident. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. And I'm very confident in myself to defend myself. However, I'm also smart enough to know there are people out there that'll... That'll fuck you up, you know? And I was like, uh... Yeah. Um, about this. You know, I can be one of the best martial artists out there. I can be this I can be that but if someone's got a gun you're pretty much screwed and when it was the white car that just rolled up to St. Patrick's and just stopped there with the lights on I was like okay and then I saw the truck and I was like okay um yeah fuck that stopped at the stop sign doubled on back and hustled on on through I was like yeah and then this time around I kept my eyes open I kept looking around all over the place I was like okay no white car no truck Hurry, go, 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 go. Okay, I'm here, stretch. All right, good, let's go, 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 go. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. So now I gotta keep my eye out for, for people around here. Because the thing is, you just don't know people's intentions, you know? And as a matter of fact, for the open carry thing, it, it's, it's not, I don't wanna, it, a rare occasion do people do that. There's a lady around here where I live. She actually walks around with a, with a pistol, you know, I've seen her, uh, she was, she had a, one of those baby carriages, you know, she's, you know, walking with her, with her kid in the baby carriage, and she, I noticed that she had this little pouch on the side, but the pouch started looking more like a gun, and then I got a closer look, because I was, you know, running that one day when I was doing my one miles, it was a gun, it was a pink gun, you know, I guess she likes the color pink or something, but I, I sure shit wasn't going to be testing her, uh, but I get, there are people around here that open carry, and she was one of them. I haven't seen her doing that anymore, nor for the fact I've seen her anymore. Um, I think a lot of women around here just don't really go out working, working out, running and stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe they're skittish or something, or maybe they're they're watch, they're weary about guys out there working out. Because I've been doing it a lot, and I haven't seen her since. I'm wondering if she's probably like, oh my god, this guy was checking me out and this, that, that. Then again, I don't know. But uh, definitely, I haven't seen her since then. I was like, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> good I suppose I don't need you to pull that out then again if you're open carry you you know you're probably smart enough to not do something stupid but then again you can't really trust people now can you again like me I couldn't trust 
those people who were next to the cemetery. And again, they could have been there for something else, or they could have been there for a secret meeting for the two vehicles, or they could have been there to fuck me up. I don't know, but I decided to not go that far. <laughs> and uh, I always have a backup plan, you know. I always have a backup plan. If that route isn't going to work out, there's always another route I can take. Um... So yeah, there's that. There's my story. There's something to talk about. Now let's get back into this gameplay. We're going to... Uh, I think I said Sacramento. I wasn't sure, but it's going to be mud. Now, everything should be good except for fuel, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, we need fuel. Engine should be fine. This should be fine. Right. Yeah, we need fuel. that race fuel sun all right let's put it in that's what she said <laughs> ah uh, shit my bad y'all that was in poor taste all right so uh here we go all right we got the whole shot Jesus, this bike. It was good in the 125 cc, but man. Okay. That's uh, another red, right? A Honda bike. I did not mean to hit him. Yeah, I think that's a Honda, or it could be a KTM. I've been I've been wrong in the past. Uh, there was a Let's Play where I was like, oh, there's a three Hondas or something, and it, and it was when I was driving a KTM. And it ends up being that there was it was one of the other KTMs, you know, because there was two KTMs. There was me and someone else, and then there was like two or three Hondas. But I was counting up the bikes. I was like, what the hell? There's a, there's a lot of them here. Jeez, this bike. Ugh, I'm 250. This bike is uh all over the road.
guy was dead last. Okay, we didn't get the new lap record, which sucks. Okay, this is what I want to see. We got four Hondas, or Reds, three Kawasaki's, one Suzuki, no KTM, no Yamaha. What in the hell is going on? Oh, we got Carmichael up in the house. We got E. Lusk. J. Dowd. Damn, I haven't. That's the first time I've noticed that, uh. That, like, two brands, two bike brands weren't, uh, weren't in the, uh, races. So. Let's get on to it. We're gonna go on sand now. This should be fun, but with this bike, I'm noticing a little bit of an. A little bit of an issue on mud. Let's go to the shop. We're gonna want some sand tires, please. So that's still good. We're gonna need some race fuel. We're gonna need uh, small brakes. Engine is fine. You know, it's one thing I haven't done in a very long time, ridden at night with the motorcycle. I haven't done that in a while. I actually like doing that. But the problem with that is I hate wearing the helmet all the time. And, you know, it doesn't make much sense to ride out with, uh, with just some sunglasses on at night, you know? And it's not so much that the helmet doesn't uh, doesn't fit or anything, even though it, ugh, even though it kind of doesn't fit. You're supposed to like the helmet size from my from my current knowledge is you're supposed to get it uh, to where it's supposed to fit on your head like snug. Basically, when you shake your head with the helmet on, it shouldn't the helmet shouldn't uh, begin to like turn on its own while on your head. Like when you start shaking your head, it's basically supposed to stay put with the helmet on and I believe on my helmet I got one size uh, one size too large or one size uh, bigger than it needs to be for my head like it'll fit on my head it's a light struggle to get on but once it's on and you know I, I shake my head the helmet feels like it'll slightly turn to the left or to the right you know and that's you don't want that kind of helmet uh, fit for you what you want is a helmet that's basically um, that's snug to damn near to a bitch to fit on. And then once it's on, you don't want it to start wobbling or turning, basically, you know? Now, I'm not going to say that you need to look for a helmet size that's a bitch to put on, even though I just said you want a helmet that's snug to a bitch to put on. You, What you really want is basically a helmet that's snug to be on. But once it's on, um... It's going to stay put until you decide to actually take it off, you know? And it shouldn't be easy to take off. It shouldn't be easy to put on, it shouldn't be easy to uh, take off, basically. And I need to get the right helmet size. It's good for now, but um, if you get into an accident, you pretty much know why it was... Uh, why uh, there was a, a helmet fall, and it was basically because you chose the wrong helmet. So I need to get the right helmet size. So at some point, whenever I get some cash, uh, and that's when I'm in the military. So, I mean, I don't have a job at this point. I'm sort of just waiting for the military. Uh, I'll go and get me the right helmet size. Now, I'm probably going to have to get me two helmets. One for the daytime, one for the nighttime. Because I don't want to wear... I really don't want to wear a full face helmet for the daytime. Although, it would save money if I just got um, one helmet, which, is, which would be a full size helmet. But the thing that I don't like about the full-size helmet, uh, or any helmet for that matter, as I was stating earlier, it gives you helmet hair. And when I get helmet hair, it is terrible. Like, 
Like some of you probably like, oh, don't be a pansy, this, that, that. No, no, you gotta understand when, when like let's say you have a certain job that you're supposed to not look like you just got out of bed, you know, you basically gotta tell people like, oh, don't, don't, don't be such a pansy. You basically gotta tell them to shut the fuck up because. You gotta look good for certain jobs, you know? You just don't want to look like a piece of shit that just got out of bed, you know? You don't want to have bed hair. People will think that you don't groom yourself, you don't take care of yourself, and then what happens, you know? So then some of you probably then understand. It's like, oh, okay, I, I get what you're saying. But that's, that's the issue with the, uh, with the helmet. That's why I generally don't ride with the, with the helmet. Now, of course, I'm asking for trouble not riding with the helmet, even though I'm in a state that doesn't require helmet usage. Um, as long as you have something covering your eyes, though, that's the main thing. So I figured during the daytime I could do that. At night, I do make a sacrifice and say, fuck it, I'd like to ride at night, even though I'm going nowhere, just riding around for fun. And then I'll go and get my helmet on. I'm like, all right, I got to deal with this. When I come back... I gotta fix this, and the best way I fix it is by showering. <clears throat> Man, no one got record, huh? The Suzuki is moving on up, though. It only moved up by one spot, but. Southwick, sand. Alright, so we can keep the same tires. We need fuel. We need a bunch of other stuff. So we got sand, we got brake, we need fuel, we need engine, and sprockets. Shot, but just barely because I saw somebody at the corner of my screen. Oh, dude, don't do that. Okay, so sand is not too bad, but then again, this is a wide track. This is a wide track. We had sand before, and it was a bit questionable, but I don't know, this bike is uh, handling not as well as the others on certain terrain. So that could be another thing right there for certain uh, bikes. So the Honda might be a generally overall good bike, but then it probably suffers on all kinds of terrain. I'm hoping that's not the case when we get the hard pack. I hope hard pack maps are still just good for me. As they have always been. Well, that's like hard pack ends up being like a bitch for this bike. actually got sponsorship for uh, the name of this game on here. There, you saw it right there, that, that sign that said Championship Motocross 2001. Yeah, you see it?
right on my ass. Oh, never mind, he crashed. And we got the new lap record. Awesome. Carmichael came in second. Which means he would have been third. I think E. Lusk was the one that crashed. Miami hard pack. All right, let's see. What do we need? We need hard pack tires. We need brakes. We need fuel. Engine is still good. Sprockets are still good. Six thousand five hundred seventy-five. Well, we're making our money back. Well, actually, we've made past the money that we had, right? Yeah, we got a. I think a thousand seventy-five extra, right? Because we had fifty-five hundred at first. All right, so garage. Put them hard pack tires on. Put them brakes on. Get that fuel going. See if Miami's still good to us. Right, we got the little shot. It's certainly, this bike is certainly taking those uh, hills a lot better than the other ones. See, the AI is planning something for me. They haven't done anything yet, but they're planning something for me. The, uh, this is one I usually lose. Let's see. 
Oh shit. Um, was it mud? Mud. Okay, we need mud tires. Fuel. Tires, fuel. Kawasaki. I think that's because of uh, who, who he actually sponsored with and all in reality. So they never switch that and they make sure Carmichael stays with Kawasaki. Alright, let's move on. Okay. Blood's Creek, Mud, Garage, Tires. Any brakes? Fuel, engine, and sprockets.
looked like that guy really tried to clip me just now. Cheers! Yes. Oh my god! I didn't actually think that can happen. I pushed too far forward. I was like, I wonder. I really hope it doesn't happen, but I wonder if it did. I, like flip the bike forward. That happened to one of my friends one time. Not on a dirt bike though, but on a bicycle. Um, he he hit the front brakes on on his mountain bike, right? And it was the craziest thing I've seen. He, we were, we were like, you know, like biking next to each other. And there was four of us, right? So we're biking next to each other. And I like, I don't know why, but I turned to look at him. Because I see him on this bike. And he's just like, like, you know, just doing his work, right? And I see him changing gears. And I was asking him, like, hey, how are the gears going? He's like, oh, pretty good. And then, like, it was like a slow motion movie kind of shit, you know? He hit the front brakes for some reason. His bike just like just launched him forward but he was still sitting down right so the front of his bike dipped forward the rear of the bike picked up and I swear to God I swear to God uh, he did like a front flip while he was still sitting in the bike and then he landed like just, just like that just normal you know and he was looking around like like what the fuck just happened and then I'm just like Oh God, Jesus! Ever anyone see that? And everyone's like, "Whoa, what happened? What happened? What's going on?" I was like, "Freaking, freaking this kid! He, he did a full flip on his bike!" Everyone looked back to like, "What just now?" And then he was like, "I don't know what just happened." I was like, "No, man, I'll tell you what happened. I watched the whole thing, man. It was like a, a fucking movie or something, dude. You, you hit the brakes, the the bike flip picked you up, and you landed, and then." 
you just had this look on your face, you know? He was like, yeah, I don't know what happened. Like, what, what, what the fuck happened? What just, like, he was, I guess, like, he was in, like, minor shock or something. Because he just didn't, like, I guess, his, like, I guess the mind just didn't compute what, what was happening just then. He, the way he explained, he was like, one moment I was looking at you explaining about something. Next moment, I land and a flash of light happened. And here I am just still biking, I guess. I was like, oh, man, I can tell you, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh oh, Carmichael's in six. But yeah. And then here you see my guy, he does a flip on the bike and pretty much looked like he died. Red Bud, which is in the mud. We need tires, fuel. Tires and fuel, huh? Damn, look at that money, man. We are making money. We didn't get the whole shot. They stepping it up, guys. They stepping it up. Oh, and somebody hit me. Oh crap! Here they come. They're they're doing it, guys. This is the match that changes it all. Ah, turn this some bitch, dude. Quit that shit. Just because you're the only Suzuki here doesn't mean you have to, like, do the guilt trip and hit everybody. That you think you're allowed to do those things. Okay, uh, we might be taking a loss on this match, people. I hope not. I'm gonna try. But this map has so many turns. It's very narrow. It's a very narrow map. Hey, what's up? Alright, we're in second now. Ah! I mean to do that. Okay, pause, cause my fingers, my thumb mostly, is, is just sweating all over the directional pad, and it feels like as if I'm gonna be slipping, like my thumbs are gonna be slipping all over the directional pad, and I just... Absolutely you hate that. Yeah, this map, I remember this map. This map sucks. It's mud, my bike's all over the place, and it's pretty narrow if you ask me. Like there's like you see uh, a little bit of the mud, right? But then you see like some green too. Where's that other map? Had like more availability for turning and stuff. For error I should say. Yeah, see, they, they are catching up to me. Shit. They're getting aggressive, though. They are getting aggressive. They all took hits to me. Now, it could just be that I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. It could just be that I ran into some of them. But rewatch it. <laughs> rewatch the damn thing. They, they're after me, people. We gotta, we gotta try and win first place on all of them.
Okay, good. Aw, oh, dude ran into me. Those are the guys that have it out for me. Dumb two. Alright, we didn't get the whole shot, but we got the new lap record. Is this the one that Ricky Carmichael usually wins? Okay, we need sand. We need tires, sand, brakes, fuel. That's pretty much it. Sand, tires, brakes, and fuel. Shop. Yeah, I think this is the place Ricky Carmichael generally usually wins. I have to change that. I have to change that. Alright, we didn't get the whole shot. Oh, shit. Oh, oh boy. Oh, my bad, dude. No, wait, that's the Suzuki shot. The Suzuki guy. Fuck him. Guy who always starts fights, running into me, knocking me out. Oh, no wonder he wins this race. Everybody just hit me. Okay. How am I going to walk away with a win on this one, guys? I'm in eighth. I am in eighth. I'll have the boost on the bike, but the, the AI is always good at these turns because I always have to slow down for the turns. I just don't have that that turning that they have. Still in eighth place. I, I'm not gonna win every first place. Now. This is a clear cut showing of that, right? It just, this game is going to punish you, and this is one of the punishments, you know, you just can't win first place on all of them. And I bet you it'll be Carmichael who wins this one. This is his level, pretty much. Look at this, I'm still in 8th place, we're about to start, oh my god. There's just no way. There's just no fucking way. I mean, I screwed myself twice at the beginning, but then everyone else started taking shots at me, too. And of course, you know, you can have all the boosting in the world. You can have all the boosting in the world, but uh, if you're not good at turns... Yeah, the 
the AI could just take these turns like no other. See? Like... Ah, oh boy. Like, if you've seen the other Let's Plays, they, how they take their turns, they can still turn while doing like a full 50, 60 miles an hour. I can't. I have to slow down. So I get down to about 40 to 50. Yeah, see, whether I use the the brakes or if I let go of the accelerators, it's just not going to happen. This race was specifically made for the AI. There's just no fucking way. Hard luck. Suck my dick. Nope. Oh, Michael didn't win that one. Okay, so it was E-Lust that won that one. Oh, congratulations, bitch. You got that one win. You took the win from me. Kenworthy's. Fucking Kenworthy. So many goddamn turns. It was meant It was meant for the AI. But I ain't losing this next one. That's for fucking sure. Okay. What do we need? We need you. You. Nope. Don't do that. Uh, what are you doing? Go back. 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 Here. This map has wider, wider, uh, a wider track, so you can take wider turns. Um, Mike, what the hell? an enemy. All of them. Look at this crap. I hope you fuckers enjoy that one fucking win that I didn't get. Oh, this remote. We 
me some mud tires, y'all. Let's go and get them. Oh, we already have them. Okay. What else do we need? We need fuel. We need a bright stuff. That's pretty much it. Dodge. What the hell is my dad watching? I can kind of hear it in the background. I don't know if you guys can, but I can. And it sort of sounds like, uh... Alright, we got the full shot. Uh, what was this? Oh, what the fuck ever. Uh, what was that? One... I saw commercials for it. It was like, uh, this, these two... They either a couple or they work together. Um... They, they go and investigate paranormal stuff uh, with like with with, the, with each other people come in and ask for help oh my god I am gonna lose this one too and they were in London this time and this guy gives them a, a recording that they were listening to and they were like uh so what's the issue with this and, and the, the recording had like this this low this low manly voice you know this old man manly voice and the guy that uh, who was giving them the recording was like that's from a, a seven-year-old girl or some shit i was like what that's the creepiest fucking thing ever it sort of sounds like what he's listening to i'm not sure yeah, they're, they're, whoa, they're way ahead. You know what I think it is? This bike picks up a whole lot of power on the boost, and that's a bit of a problem because I start running into shit. Fuck you, don't, don't don't do that shit. Yeah, you saw how he took that turn, right? He barely uh, does what I do, right? Where it looks like I'm actually sliding and dragging the bike and all that. Not him. Freaking AI. Come on, we're fourth, and this is the last freaking lap. We can't let them win another match. Oh, come, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm letting them if, if I keep doing bullshit like that. Oh, man, look at that. Look at the, look at the AI. Look at, look how far the AI is. Everyone else behind me is where they should be, right? They're all next to each other. They're, sh they're fighting each other for the match. The AI ahead of us. Look at that bullshit. You ain't passing me. That is just horseshit. Go have a fucking go have your fucking meeting. Took another win from me. Who won? Carmichael won this one.
Which is still good, we need fuel. Okay, so that's twice we lost. See, the AI is never really too far away from me. Unlike if they get in the lead, all of a sudden the computer helps the shit out of them, and they're like so far up in the lead. Like even their slowest individual back there in eighth place, he's never really that far away from first place, you know? Whereas I, if I get in the eighth or seventh place, well, you see how far away the AI can go. It's just boom. But we still play. We still play to prove that we can do it. It can be done. Somebody had an accident back there.
bike is doing things that the other bikes didn't do. <clears throat> Seems like it really takes advantage of that uh, of that engine boost that you give it. Well, not, not the engine boost, like the boost button that I keep pressing right where you hit X twice, basically, your accelerator. But, like, the engine boost is in the actual engine upgrade for your bike. It really takes advantage of it, so then you're, you can get off of these jumps you'll end up running in the walls like I do a lot. So I remember with the Kawasaki and the KTM, it took these turns a lot nicer, even with the, the upgraded engine. Now, the Kawasaki didn't really benefit too much from the upgraded engine because we just didn't have the money for it. I mean, we did, but I chose not to use it because I didn't want to, you know, not have cash. KTM had a better uh, better chance with the engine, but this bike, when it, when it gets that rebuilt engine, my god. Finding this bike to be more all over the place, if anything. For the 250, that is. On the 125cc, it was uh, this bike was a blast, but uh, on the 250, that's a different story. We gotta, we gotta really control this thing. Wait a minute, is this guy singing a song to a girl? I never really pay attention to the lyrics of this song, but then I heard him... I heard him talk about panties dropping and two black eyes and your, your guy, this and that. I was like, wait, what? What the fuck? Oh shit, he's right behind me. Woo! Boston Hard Pack. Good old Boston. Shop. Hard Pack's going. That's good, that's good. We need fuel. Everything else should be fine. Garage. Loading Boston. 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 I have a point about the mango monkey. She touched it. I don't know where that came from. I just remember uh, one of the ERB's uh, epic rap battles of history where it was uh, James Bond versus Austin Powers. And then, uh, the one Bond was like, uh, you know, when it comes to me, I'm the original or something like that. And then, out, out from, like, uh, the water was, uh, the guy impersonating Sean Connery, right? He was like, I wouldn't say original. <laughs> it's the funniest shit ever. Well, slaps the shit out of him, and he's like, well, aren't you the kind of language?
what did he tell me? He's like, uh, oh my god. He tell me, he said something about like, oh, uh, you know, you've had your six or something like that, because like, I guess Sean Connery's had six, uh, James Bond films, I think. I have them all recorded, I, it's just been a while since I've seen them all. Cause I, I love the James Bond films, I recorded all of the, all, ladies and gentlemen. On my Dish DVR, it was just amazing, I was like, yes! Cause they were doing like a Bond marathon, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna take advantage of this shit. <clears throat> now, I didn't record GoldenEye, but that's because my sister bought that for me on DVD, and I was like, alright, perfect, I got this. I got all the others. This is good to go. I like them all. They all played a, a great, great James Bond. There was Sean Connery was first, right? Then you got uh, uh, Roger Moore, and then it went back to Sean Connery for for a bit. But I think somewhere in there, there was either George Lazenby or Timothy Dalton. I think it was George Lazenby, and then it went to uh, Roger Moore again. And then after that was Timothy Dalton, and then Pierce Brosnan, and then Daniel Craig. Because I know originally it was supposed to go to Pierce Brosnan between Timothy Dalton and Pierce Brosnan, but Pierce Brosnan was with uh, was doing a, a show, right, a Remington Steel, and they wouldn't let his contract go or something, so he was pretty pissed about that. And that meant Timothy Dalton was able to do... Uh, James Bond film, which wasn't bad. It wasn't bad, but you gotta imagine what would have been if it was Pierce Brosnan in that. But when uh, his when the show ended uh, for Remington Steel, and then he went on to do a uh, James Bond film, Goldeneye was just fucking amazing. I liked all the films though, and all the James Bonds are great. I think even I, I think I even got Thunderball, even though Thunderball wasn't really considered a Bond film, because the same year there was another Bond film, which was the original Bond film, or was an original, it was a original Bond film, because it had a uh... fuck. Who's the creator of James Bond? The guy who actually wrote the books. Whoever, whoever he was, you know, he, he was in on those for the original film. But uh, Thunderball with uh, with uh, Sean Connery, it, it didn't have him in there. It had somebody else. And they didn't call him, like, James Bond. I think they just called him, called him 007 because James Bond's a trademark. Secret Agent 007 or something like that. And it was an okay film, you know. Fine. We're going to Steel City. This is going to be mud. Uh, we got to go to the shop and purchase some mud tires. But yeah, for the ERB epic rap battle of history between the, the two James Bond and Austin Powers, he called him misogynistic. And then uh, Austin came, comes in, he's like, uh, yeah, you know, I, I like to you know mess around with the girls, but when but no no means no baby or something like that. And I was like, ah, too good, too good. I wasn't sure, but I, I think that happened in one of the films, right? Oh, dude, please. Don't, don't fuck with me right now. Try me, bitch. Just try me. Now I gotta catch up. Look, look at these motherfuckers how far ahead they are. The game is like, perfect. One of these other guys slowed them down. Oh, man. This game. This game, y'all. Right, there's second place right here. Fucking cunt. Oh, there's first place. You saw how he took that turn, right? 
how fast that shit was. What's up, bitch? God, that would have been terrible if I had hit that full speed. Good thing I let go of the accelerator and I hit the brake. I was like, oh my god, no. Would have been part of that fucking wall. People would have passed me. I would have been pissed. I would have died a little on the inside. Just a little. Cat's out the door trying to be a dick. Look, Leo, you want to get in, you just got to open the door. It's not too hard. I've done it many times before in the past. Especially during my Let's Plays. I guess apparently my dad helped him in. Leo, you scratch me. You scratch me, and I swear. I'm not even going to finish that. I just want you to know that that's happening. starting to fuck up because I got I got my peripheral vision on right if that makes sense I just see at the corner of my eye basically my peripheral vision that my cat's over here investigating something and it's worrying me because I don't like him getting into places he shouldn't be you know and as they say curiosity killed the cat and the reason why he's investigating is because there's a in, in this closet in the room there's a, what do you call it, uh, a water purifier, and it's on, it's making noise. And he's checking because he's never heard that before, you know? Or it doesn't happen that often. So he's trying to, he's trying to figure out, what the hell is this? What's going on? Now he just left the room, and then he left the door open, little bastard. So we won 13. Oh, excuse me, 13 of these uh, levels. Uh, that's a baker's dozen, right? Because a uh, big uh, 12 would be just a dozen, and a baker's dozen is 13. The, the extra, the extra thing or the roll that a baker would make for himself just to test it out or some shit like that. I, don't know. I might be wrong. I might be right. I don't know. Las Vegas. We need sand. We need some sand tires. What else did Danny DeVito do? I think Danny. Yeah, Austin Powers movie, right? Uh, there was that one. Uh, the second one was it? He was he was portraying Mini Me. I was like, hey, asshole! I'm Mini Me. Come and get me. Wasn't there? Wasn't they supposed to make a third uh, Austin Powers, but they never did for some reason? Because I think that was one of the one of the jokes that James Bond did on uh, Epic Rap Battles of History towards uh, Austin Powers.
Las Vegas. We ain't losing this one. Fuck all of y'all. I didn't get the whole shot though. What in the hell? I should have flipped them all off as soon as I got off the launch. Should have like Boo! gave them one hell of a middle finger, you know, the kind that just like launches in midair and then it'll explode and like a million bun a bunch of mi middle uh, million middle fingers drops on or something. Star Spangled Banner going off, you know. It's like, Okay, so this bike is handling for crud on sand. Well, I mean, it's not terrible. But I'm noticing I'm doing things on this bike on this map that I don't normally do. With uh, KTM and Kawasaki. And I surprisingly, this Let's Play, I haven't heard that one song that I'm supposed to skip, which is pretty cool. Didn't have to worry. did it, but we didn't win every single one. We lost Kenworthy's and, uh, All the points you can get on amateur, all the points you can get on 125cc, but when it came to 250cc, the bike was a little too much to handle. We lost two of the races, so we didn't get all, all the points for it. But we did win. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's Honda out of the way. Up next is probably going to be... Uh, Suzuki, and then we'll leave off with Yamaha. And this time around, picking uh, the Honda bike, we uh, the sponsorship would give us more money than uh, than the others per race, and uh, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money that we can have in our pockets. It's a good split, a better split. Just play again, why not?
What's up, scrub? He gave me a dirty look just then. Hey, well, watch my toes, dude. Shit. Cat came up wanting to bite them fuckers off. Dude, look, I didn't mean to call you a scrub. My bad, alright? Damn. Uh, let's, uh, is there a safe feature or something? Probably not. We'll go ahead and just do that right there. Anyways, uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Play of Championship Motocross 2001 featuring Ricky Carmichael. Um, we finished, uh, Honda pretty much, or the Reds. Um, up next would be between Yamaha and Suzuki, although I did say it's going to be Suzuki. It's still up in the air, who knows. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Take care, and you guys have yourselves a great night, alright?